everybody. I know there's some people in the social, in the kitchen, in the foyer out there. Come on in. Why don't you let's get started, everybody? What a great group. Hey, choir, why don't you come on up here? It's glory to his name in 493. Grab your hymn book in 493. You say, I'm not in the choir. Come on up anyway. I'm a visitor. Come on up, Sheree. Anyway, how do you know? Everybody, come on, girl. Do it now. Come on, come on. Alicia, let her come on. You guys, come on. Sing, sing. Let's do it. Fill the part of the auditorium. If I don't want to sing, come on up. All right? Let's do it. I'll tell you what. Since the people are playing and the choir is getting up here, let's just do that first before the announcements, all right? I'm ready to sing anyway. You guys ready to sing anyway? Let's do it, man. You ready? something that we're blessed to have and we're so grateful for your mercy upon us your grace Lord won't you tonight move in a special way upon the people as they preach may you dear Lord God do what you've done in the last couple of days and amaze us with such a good spirit Father I've been amazed because I'm glorifying you for those that have shown up those who have been here it's really been neat to watch the attendance Father I'm grateful to you for those who are online and those who are in the drive-in right now. I just ask that you'd be with all of them. And Father, I pray that your fresh fire and your fresh wind would fall upon us. Dear Lord God, may it be that we get to a point where we understand that good old fresh understanding of who you are brings change. You never change, but we sure need to. God, help us. To be what we ought to be for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, go ahead and have a seat. I see some others coming. That's fantastic. Praise the Lord. All right. Look up here. See this right here? You don't have to turn it off. Just get the sound off, okay? Get the sound off of that right there. I know some are out in the parking lot. It's 89.9 FM. I turn to your neighbor and tell them so that they're not confused. There were 105 of you guys last night. Thank God for you. Enjoy being with you on Facebook. Enjoy the live broadcast. Enjoy getting to see some comments. Enjoy getting to talk to some of you today that were online. And I know you have underlying conditions, special things are going on in your life. We get it. Don't leave. Please. Those who are driving, don't leave until 745, okay? Anyone else that would be willing to sit with Sue, Brett, anybody? There's quite a few that are doing it. It's okay. I just wanted to see who would pack a pew tomorrow night. Would you really? You get the five hundred dollar prize. It is. It is. It is five hundred. Five hundred. Not supposed to lie. Are you? Okay. Anyway, sign ups. You got the candy. Got the breakfast. Got the stuff coming up tomorrow at three o'clock. Not tomorrow at three o'clock. Or what is it? Is there visitation tomorrow, brother? At the college. At the college. At what time? Uh, tomorrow, 
uh, they're going to leave right at 4, and it's only going to be an hour tomorrow, so they're here at 5. Exactly. Okay, that's what we did today, 3 to 4 o'clock. It was beautiful. Eddie, wasn't it great? We had a great time. I want Eddie for the first time today. That was really neat in our team. So offering tonight is taken up in this way. The conference expenses are important, okay? Now, Dr. Bruce has spent more than $2,000 on this conference. And I think we ought to get behind him and help him. Amen. I really do. So if you got my little text today, I hope you wrote a little check or something. And if you didn't, maybe $20, $40 you can put in there. Or maybe you can see him later and explain to him what's going on and how important. Now grab that little envelope and put on there for conference. Okay? For conference. And we'll make sure that it goes right to that need. Okay? Brother Gary, why don't you come and guide us? In our first hymn. Let's stand together as we sing, my friend. Oh, sorry. All right, we're going to sing the first and the last of all that will be glory. Sunday for the revival. I thank you for the, the newcomers, soul winners, hey, and yeah. yes. went out last night. Yeah. I pray for the, the college and for everything that's going on. Yeah. It's, yeah. Just a beautiful, it's a beautiful yeah. night. Hey. And I pray for the, those that's watching today on, on, on the, uh, the radio or listening to the radio or watching the video. I'm just mm -hmm. praising God for yes. tonight. I'm just hey. thankful. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. I thank you. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. Sing. He keeps me singing. Yeah. 
He keeps me singing. We're going to sing the, uh, the first and the fifth. First and the fifth. He keeps me singing. Hey. Second and the fifth.
tonight, but considering the condition of our country. Yes, sir. That was a prayer. Yes, sir. That's right. Only God can help us. That's right. And uh, Amen. group sing. I'm probably going to stop you in the middle of it. Let's come up and get on our knees and pray for our country. Amen. Amen. Yes. For your kids and your grandkids. Everybody yes. stand. Amen.
thinking about seeds. I got to come down to the feed store and get some seeds because we're starting bring in. Bring your wallet with you. Okay, I'll bring my wallet. <laughs> I'll pay double, brother, triple. Yeah. In that great store, I'll tell you. But the reason I said that just right, that bluntly is this morning, some of you saw coffee time. Uh, it's funny because I struggled with that fire for two hours. Two hours, I couldn't get that dumb fire going. It was so wet this morning. Yeah. And uh, a lot of you know I have our full-time job here at this church. But I told the guys when I started, I said, I don't want to do 80 hours a week. You remember that, Earl? I want to do 40 hours, 50 hours <laughs> to where I can enjoy some other things. And I do. Dr. Bruce laughs, but I do. I do. I do a lot of different things, don't I? During the day, I go and farm. I've got chickens and ducks and all kinds of junk. I say, Pastor, why are you saying all that? Well, I'm clearing a, a great part of our land to put more animals on. Yeah. I have this massive one acre. It's, it's just huge. <laughs> but I started out this morning. There's some people coming in for driving. Listen, you guys that are listening to me in your cars right now, if you're just coming in, it started at 6.30, so don't be surprised that you're already hearing us, okay? God bless you. I'm glad you're here. Yeah. Uh, but I tried to start that fire with gasoline today. Oh, my God. Oh, no. And it didn't work. Oh, my gosh, no. And then I tried to start it with alcohol, and it didn't work. You know what worked? A couple of little sticks. I'm serious. Yeah. I put a little bit of paper under a couple little sticks and a match. There you go. And that thing, I'm telling you, Barb, what did you tell me about that fire when you were trying? It was hot, wasn't it? I mean, it was huge. It was a massive bonfire. I want you to know something. Michael Wavell took two little sticks and let the Spirit of God through one little stinking match light those sticks this week. I want you to know this. I believe this church could be five, six, seven thousand people in the next ten and twelve years. Yeah. How many of you believe that that can happen? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, there's some of us with, with that's good, and I know I know a couple of very faithful people. I just watch that don't ever raise their hand to anything. So don't think that they're bad people. They just don't. Yeah. They just you know they don't. But I do believe, like you do, that that yeah. can happen. But it's not going to happen with gasoline. It's not going to happen with alcohol. It's not going to happen with two hours of sitting there trying to get things going. It's going to happen with the Holy Spirit of God and a couple little sticks. Michael, I want you to come and give us some sticks, all right, Pastor? Get us started because it only took 12 to start the whole world on fire. And here tonight, you can see that happen by God's grace. Brother Weber, guidance. Well, God knows how to orchestrate everything because when I had my messages, the night is... Fire releasing prayer. Fire releasing prayer. First Kings chapter 18. First Kings chapter 18. And we're going to just read our text verse, verse 36 through 38, and dive right into the message. First Kings chapter 18 in verse 36. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, Amen. and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Now yeah. we're in verse 38. Yes. Then the fire of the Lord fell, Amen. and consumed the burnt sacrifice, and the wood, and the stones, and the dust, and licked up the water yeah. that was in the trench. That's right. Yeah. God, we're so thankful to be here tonight. Uh, we're thankful, Lord, for the fire that you can light down deep in our soul. We're thankful, Lord, for the Holy Ghost of God uh, that can break forth in our lives, in our churches, Lord, and give us the power that comes from the throne of grace, the throne of heaven, enabling us, Lord, to make a difference in this world that we live in. 
I pray that we might be able to learn just some simple principles tonight uh, in this matter of praying until the fire of God comes down. And Lord, we pray that you'd send the fire tonight. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, Ahab was a wicked king in Israel. And uh, the prophet Elijah would be the man that God would use to pronounce a judgment on Israel, on Ahab, uh, because of their wickedness and their unwillingness to obey God. There would be no rain in Israel for the space of three years. And Elijah would place a great challenge to Ahab in chapter 18, in verse 19. He says, Now therefore, send and gather to me all Israel under Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal, 450 of the prophets, and the groves, 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. So he put a great challenge to Ahab. Ahab uh, would be angry with uh, Elijah. He felt the problem with Israel was the, pro the man of God. And when I say our world is really developing that spirit, the problem with our society, with our nation, are the people who say they're Christians and walk with God and live for God and share our faith in God. And so the world wants to blame the believer. Yeah. And so Elijah puts a challenge to him. And he said, go get your prophets, bring them over here, and let's set up a, a, a competition here in reference to whose God is God. Yeah. And then he gives a charge to the people in uh, verse 21. Elijah came unto all the people and said, how long halt you between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. I always like how when there's yeah. silence, when you have to make a decision. Yeah. And he wants, he wants them to uh, make it, uh, their minds up. Are you the children of God or aren't you? Yeah. And so prophets of Baal, come on and we'll see if your God answers you. Yeah. Uh, people of God, make a decision. Don't, don't be standing between two opinions. Yeah. Either if you believe God is God, then worship yeah. him. Amen. If you believe Baal yeah. is God, then you Amen. worship him. Yeah. And, but Elijah is going to show them through this prayer that he's going to offer up, whose God is the true God. Yeah. You know, the prophets of Baal would gather together, and they would pray and cry and shout. They would cut themselves, but no answer. You know, a lot of churches, there's a lot of noise there. Right? Uh, yeah. There's a lot of clanging and banging. And there's a lot of supposed praying in there. There's a lot of uh, foolishness going on in how they respond to God and how they treat themselves in reference to defiling the temple of God. And, and there's a lot going on, but God's not answering. No, that's right. I think we need to come to a place where we acknowledge the fact that God is the true God hey. and that God in this world is a false God. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't go and embrace the things of the world to try to get a hold of a holy God. Right. And so Elijah yeah. comes on the scene Yes. And where we read tonight, he offers up this prayer. It was a, a fire-releasing prayer. Amen. And he prayed 63 words. These prophets of Baal prayed all day long. I mean, they're shouting, fooling around, carrying on, doing all kinds of things. Nothing ever happened. And Elijah, the man of God, stands up and prays a 63-word prayer, and fire comes from heaven. I thought about this this afternoon when I was reading over the message. I thought of this. I mean, he, didn't pray, he didn't pray a long time. He just prayed 63 words. Uh, he didn't pray with any vain repetitions. He just prayed 63 different words crying out to his God. And when he did, the fire of God came down. So I want to just look at a couple of principles tonight on this fire releasing prayer and how can we experience something like this in our life in our days in which we live i'm not a charismatic i can guarantee you that but i'm afraid we baptists have allowed the charismatics to cower us into a corner where we're scared to death to see god do something miraculous because we yeah. are so weird that's right yeah. but god has been in the business of bringing revivals in years gone by god has changed people's lives and God has stirred the churches, and I believe he can stir the churches today. We need some fire-releasing prayer that will get the attention of God. First of all, I see the examination in the prayer. 
in verse 36, notice he identifies his heritage. It says, And it came to pass at the time of the offering of evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel. That's important. You know what he's doing? He's identifying his relationship with God. Amen. Realize this. When you start to pray, you need to remember this, that you're a child of the king. Amen. You need to remember this, that you've been bought with the precious Amen. blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And because of the fact that you're a child of the king, you don't need to be afraid of the days in which we live. Yeah. We don't need to be afraid of circumstances that are surrounding us. Right. Because, wait a minute, our God is real and he has told us to not to be afraid. Amen. And so he tells, we identify with the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, the Hebrews tells us that we need to come boldly Amen. into the throne of grace. Amen. I mean, Elijah is being bold here. Amen. He's withstanding the prophets of Baal. And I want you to know tonight that you can allow the presence of God based on your child of God to remove the fears that are in your life. I preached to my church, and I told them, I said, one of the sad things about this COVID is it has caused people to be afraid. Yeah. Yeah. Christians and unsaved believe people yes. alike. Right. Afraid. We, uh, we, God has not given us a spirit of fear. Yeah. We need to pray to the Holy Amen. God to get God to yeah. do something yeah. in our yeah. midst. Yeah. It doesn't matter whether it's a pandemic. It doesn't matter whether it's, there's a holy rollers going on. It doesn't matter whether there's uh, financial wealth to be gained or lost. It doesn't matter. For the Christian, when we pray, we pray believing that we're a part of the family of God. So it eliminates fear. It provides hope. You know, Jesus said this, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. And the God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Amen. You know, we're not dead. We're alive tonight. Amen. And I, it's all right for Christians to get excited about being a Christian. Yeah. It's all right to be stirred up when we go into the presence of God. And so I see his prayer, first of all, identifies his heritage. Then it confirms his sovereignty. Because he goes on in the middle of that verse 36. It says, and thou art the God of Israel. Realize this. Let God be God. Amen. Let God be true in every man alive. Yes. Now, God is sovereignly in this. And I'm no Calvinist tonight, so don't get any Amen. ideas about that. But I can tell you this, God is sovereign. He is in control. And may I say, he knew the pandemic was coming before we found it. Yes. 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 Let me tell you, he knew that you would be here tonight. Now, God knew that this was service was going to go on tonight. Amen. The song that was sung, what our pastor has identified and talked about, the fire and the message I have is on fire, release the prayer. I'm going to tell you, I was praying, I worked on this message about a year ago for this conference. And God knew that tonight that we needed to hear, that we need to pray to the fire of God. And so examination of the prayer. It identifies his heritage. It confirms his sovereignty. Your prayer assumes the sovereignty of God. We don't go to prayer to tell God what to do. Yes. We go to prayer to find out what God wants to do. Amen. 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 And so Amen. prayer Amen. confirms the sovereignty of God. Yes. Yeah. I see it reveals the position. In verse 36, he says that I am thy servant. Yeah. That's our position in prayer. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, we're not going to dictate to God. We're not going to boast about, boast right. about who we are or what we have. We're going to God knowing that we're in need of God's grace and God's mercy to move in our behalf. And because he is sovereignly in control, I know that as a child of God, he's going to take care of him. So I see the examination of the prayer. Yeah. Number two, I see this, the explanation in prayer. Notice in verse 36 also, we see it declares obedience. As we get down to the end of verse 36, he says that I have done all these things at thy word, declares obedience. How we need to be obedient to the Lord, and uh, why? Because we need to abandon iniquity. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. 
And so we, I don't know, you know, we talk about lifting up holy uh, hands. And the Bible says, lift up holy hands. Didn't say pick up, hold, lift up filthy hands. Right. It said pick up holy hands. And we often talk about praying, lifting up your hands. I've lifted up my hands and prayed. I don't lay flat on the ground praying. Yeah. And uh, it, it puts you in a position of submission because of the fact you're, you're acknowledging that you need to obey everything that God has commanded. Amen. And so it declares obedience by abandoning iniquity and embracing righteousness. Yeah. And so we see, in uh, what is that here? I just skipped over it. Oh, uh, Psalm 5 and 12 says, For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor wilt thou compass him as with a shield. And so when we go to God in prayer, we declare our be obedience. Elijah is just simply telling, them, telling them, God this. Now, Lord, I'm coming to you because I'm your child. I'm, I'm aware of the fact that you're sovereign and in control of all things. And I know that I'm your servant. But realize this, as your servant, I have done what you told me to do. And so we go to God and you say, well, why is that important? Because God wants to do something in your life through prayer. Yeah. Yeah. I see it, is, yeah. it desires to be heard in verse 37. It says, hear me, O Lord, hear me. Our desire to be heard is that you don't give up on praying. You don't stop short of God coming through. You know, old time Amen. preachers Amen. years ago, and old time Christians used to talk about praying through. Amen. And you know, sometimes we pray uh, just for a yeah. few moments, yeah. and we expect God to move, and God wants us to tarry yeah. and, and be in His presence, and so Amen. it enables yeah. us to find direction in our life. Yeah. It enables us to overcome the stresses in our life. It leads us to a place of patience in the presence of the Lord. Yeah. Charles Spurgeon said this, if you believe in prayer at all, expect God to hear you. Yeah. I don't know why we pray sometimes expecting God's not going to move. Right. Pray expecting God to hear you. If you do not expect, you will not have God. Uh, he will not hear you unless you believe that he will hear you. But if you believe he will, he will be as good as your faith. And so we have a willingness to pray, believing that God hears us, and we're not going to stop crying out to us to him until he does. You know, when the Bible repeats something, you need to pay attention. Right. Because he says, Elijah says, hear me, O Lord, and he says it again, hear me, O Lord. Yeah. So we need to be willing to pursue the Lord. So the explanation of prayer. I see the expectation in prayer. In verse 37, he says, oh, uh, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God. His expectation was that God would reveal himself by answering the prayer that he is offering up. Yeah. Now, I want you to know this. God will hear our prayers, and he'll reveal himself. Yeah. My wife and I, we were in Bible college. Uh, I grew up um, a charter bus. To pay my way through school, so I'd go to school at 7 30 in the morning and get out of school at about 1 30 in the afternoon. And I'd go to work at 3 30 in the afternoon and I'd get home between 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning. That was my schedule every day. And uh, one day I got home about 3 in the morning and I went to sleep. I set the alarm, and when I woke up, first period was over. The alarm didn't go off. My clock broke. So I went to, when I went to school, I had to go before the discipline committee. And, all right, Mike, why were you late for class? Why didn't you make first period class? Well, Dr. McNeely, yeah, you know, I'll never forget that guy's name. Dr. McNeely, I said, I, I didn't get home until 3 o'clock in the morning. My alarm clock broke. And uh, I, I, so I was late for class. He said, that's not my problem. You get the merits. And uh, he said, get an alarm clock. I said, I don't have any money for an alarm clock. I'll get one as soon as I can. Mm -hmm. And so my wife and I were praying. We didn't have any food. Right. I certainly wasn't going to spend money on an alarm clock when I needed to buy food. Exactly. And she and I were praying. I mean, we, we were so poor. I mean, a mouse had to pack a lunch to go to our apartment. <laughs> I mean, it was that bad. Yeah. It wasn't even a crumb on the table. Yeah. <laughs> and we were praying, God, 
you got to feed us this week. Yeah. God, we don't have any food. And I was praying, God, I need an alarm clock. Yeah. And we were praying. We went to church on a Wednesday night. Amen. And we came home from church. And as we walked up, and now listen, I didn't pray this way. Hey, call a prayer chain. Tell everybody what I'm praying about. We didn't tell one living soul. Not one. But we went to God about it. And I'm going to tell you, we came home from church on a Wednesday night. We walked up on sitting on our doorstep was two bags of groceries wow. with an alarm clock. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to tell you one thing tonight. Amen. I can testify oh, for about two hours of God doing miraculous things yeah. like that. Yeah. Right. And I, we need to pray with expectation. Yes. The revelation of God, his goodness. God's been good to me. Amen. And God's been good to you. And so when we pray... Let's pray expecting God to do something because of his goodness. Yeah. Not only that, but his uniqueness. Yeah. You know, God cares for you. I love that song, no one ever cared for me like Amen. Jesus. Amen. And I'm going to tell you one thing right now. He is unique. He is uh, greater than any God that can be imagined. Uh, he says in Psalm 86 and 10, for thou art great and doest wondrous things. Thou art God alone. And I'm going to tell you, when you get into a prayer time where you're acknowledging the goodness of God, it gets the attention of God, and God will send fire down from heaven. That's what Elijah was doing. Yeah. But not only that, but his vastness. Psalm 92 says, Before the mountains were brought forth, or even has found the earth uh, and a world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. And so when we pray, we pray with expectation based on the goodness of God, on the uniqueness of our God, yeah. and the vastness of our God that he yeah. is able to respond to the prayers that we're offering up. Elijah yeah. was expecting God to send fire from heaven. Yeah. George Whitfield said this, true repentance will entirely change you. The uh, bias of your souls will be changed. Then you will delight in God, in Christ, in his law, and in his people. Yeah. I mean, pray through till God does something. Yeah. Yes. Uh, several years ago, I was at a prayer meeting with some men in my church. I had about 17, 18 men. And we were praying. We had been to a preaching service, preaching meeting, and we were about 9 o'clock at night. And we got together for prayer, and we started praying. And as we were praying, I uh, Time went by, time went by. We were, I mean, we were confessing sins. Yeah. Uh, we were crying out to God. We were weeping in prayer. We were rejoicing in prayer. Yeah. I mean, we were just having a time in God. And about midnight, I thought, well, maybe these guys are about wore out. So I started to close the time in prayer. And as I closed the prayer, the one, and several of the men said, Pastor, we ain't done praying. I thought to myself, praise God for men who are spiritual. Yeah. Yeah. They said, we're not done praying. I said, well, okay, it's midnight. Let's keep on with it then. Yeah. And we started just praying again. We started going on to God. And I'm going to tell you, about 2 o'clock in the morning, the fire of God came down. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, about 2 o'clock in the morning, the Spirit of God smote my heart. Yeah. About 2 o'clock in the morning, I started weeping. And I started crying out to God. Yes. And I started praying, oh God, purge this church. Yeah. I cried out, oh God, purge this church. Yeah. The only words that I could have come out of my mouth was God, purge this church. Mm -hmm. And we went before God for about another half hour or so. And we closed in prayer and went to get some sleep. Several of the men came to me and said this to me. They said, Pastor, why did you pray that? I said, I have no idea. Right. You ever pray the prayer that the Holy Spirit is mm -hmm. directing mm -hmm. through you? Mm -hmm. yes. You pray the words that the Spirit of God is impressing on you. Yeah. I said, I don't know. I said, God directed me to pray that way. Yeah. Well, in the next couple of days, I found out why the Lord wanted me to pray that way. Yeah. There was a major problem in my church. A major problem. God got us through that, and I believe it was because God was purging our church. Yeah. We lost about 50 people out of our church. Wow. God purged it. Yeah. You say, be careful about praying for God's right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So God can move. Yeah. What happened? You say, what happened? I'll tell you what happened. 
God saw 17, 18 men down on their knees crying out to him and praying, God, will you do something? Will you move? And God responded yeah. as he did in the days of Elijah. Amen. And he sent the fire down, and the fire brought to light what was wrong right. in the church. Yeah. Yeah. We can't do this stuff on our own. We cannot manipulate the will and the power of God. But I know one thing, we can be like Elijah and stand before the prophets of Baal, between the, before the heathen of the world, before the, believe, the family of God who won't even take a stand for God. Yeah. But you can go to God and you can pray like Elijah prayed. Yeah. And it says in verse 38, then the fire of the Lord fell. Yeah. God's fire can fall down upon us. In verse 39, it says that when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces. Yes, they did. And they said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He yes. is God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Back in verse 21, they couldn't say a word. Mm -hmm. right. They wouldn't take a stand. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't acknowledge who God is. But I'm going to tell you, when the fire of God fell, Amen. they got in tune with God real quick. Yeah. Yes. So I want to challenge you tonight in this matter of prayer. Pray through to God until the fire of God comes down. Yes. Yes. Don't be in a hurry in the altar. I tell our folks all the time. Amen. When we pray, you want to come forward, you want to pray, the church is open as long as you want to be there pray. If you want to pray all night, then you pray all night. Yes. I'll be quiet because we need to tarry in the presence of God because Amen. we need the fire of God to yeah. come down upon us. Let's yeah. pray. Amen. Father, thank you so much for allowing us to be together tonight. Lord, I certainly did not do this passage justice, but I tried to communicate, Lord, your willingness to send fire upon us. Amen. John stated that Jesus would baptize us with the Holy Ghost in fire. Yeah. Oh, God, give us the fire of the Lord tonight. Burn up everything that's wicked in our hearts. God, clear the way for a spirit of revival to take place in this Amen. church. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Just because you've been sitting so long, why don't you stand for a second? We're not going to have you come forward right now. The, uh, the way to the altar, you couldn't even come down to two sides because of people standing and praying during the turn of time. What a tremendous message. You see how God's working this whole thing through? Yeah. Nobody asked our college, what are you singing? We're singing Turn the Time. Oh, yeah. a good thing to preach yeah. would be a sermon on the fire. And a good introduction, Pastor, would be telling us about your bonfire. No. God's putting this thing together. Amen. Amen. Don't leave right. early. That's right. That's what it is. Brother Gilbert's not a long preacher. Don't leave early. Yeah. About 8 o'clock, we'll be having the invitation. Yeah. But I wanted you, Brother Gilbert, as soon as you get hooked up, go on up there. I wanted you to just stand for a second. God, please take this message. Seal it in our hearts. Seal it in our lives. Help people who used to be people of prayer to be prayer, people of prayer again. Help people, Lord, who have never got beyond. Uh, Lord, bless this bunch as we crunch our lunch type of prayers. God, to come to know you and seek your face. You said seek your face. Help us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Brother uh, brother Gilbert, how many of you have never heard him preach? Raise your hand. All right. Well, you can tell that they're here with him tonight. Uh, <laughs> brother Gilbert, um, every preacher we've had in this conference... Uh, I didn't plan it this way, but I got to think it. Every preacher we've had in this conference, out of their churches through the years, Brother Purdue, Brother Weigel, Brother Gilbert, Brother uh, Secrets, Ron Secrets, myself, we've had scores of people come out of our churches who are pastoring churches or on the mission field today. And I just thank God we've got people, these men support our college in yeah. one way or another. Yeah. Some people support me as an evangelist because I don't get paid as a president of college. That's, they aren't treating me bad. That's just what I do. Yeah. 
but I want to share something with you. Brother Gilbert's church sends a monthly mission check every month to the college and then half as much again to me. Right. And uh, I've never doubted that he cares about our ministry. Yeah. And I, I'm so thankful you, Brother Gilbert, but that didn't buy you a place in the pulpit. Preach what God's laid on your heart. <laughs> well, let me take a minute before I get started and tell you about these men that I'm serving with tonight. Brother Miller, I've known, I'm guessing, about 35 years, something like that, in the yes. 90s, right. early 90s. Well, our, our paths could have crossed years earlier, but he was in St. Louis, and I passed to a church outside of St. Louis. But he is a good guy. He is my friend. I love him like a brother. I would trust him with everything I have. Yeah. He's a good guy. I didn't get to meet your pastor. Where is he? Is he did he go high? Oh, there he is. I didn't get to meet your pastor until just a few years back. And I don't really know a lot about him, so I was pleased when I got to sit with his father today at, at dinner time. <laughs> and I asked him, I said, Brother Seacrest, how old was Brother Seacrest before you had him tested? <laughs> he said, well, we had him tested at least twice that I know of. There's definitely something wrong with <laughs> Let me tell you what I think is wrong with him. He loves you folks with an abundant Amen. Yes. There's something wrong with that man. I want to be wrong like he is. Yeah, I yeah. know it's so. I'm just sorry he doesn't get to pastor the best people in the, in the world. <laughs> I love this college. I've taught some of these youngsters. I met Jesus. I did not get to teach him, but I taught David and I taught Molly. Oh. I never taught Is it Elizabeth, and I never taught Mrs. Household. But I love the college. Yes. Uh, there is something wrong with our nation when we don't have good Christian colleges anymore. Right. right. Amen. Amen. Let me read one verse, and we're going to be gone. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 10. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10. I want to see if you guys are that good because it's going to get these things right up. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10. It's loading? He needs a verse, he says. Chapter 10, verse 29. 39. Sorry. Hebrews 10, verse 39. It's up there, man. The Bible says here, and who's the writer of the book of Hebrews? Somebody tell me. You're absolutely certain it's the writer. <laughs> You're certain. You're certain. Uh, <laughs> I've got the answer. Don't rattle your brain. It's the Holy Spirit of God. You guys got to fuss and relax and get all upset because you think you don't want everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. Brother, will you throw me that water? I'm going to have a dry mouth experience up here. And I don't want to be dry as well. <laughs> I believe Paul wrote it, but I cannot prove that. Let's read the verse together, will you? Verse 39. When I say three, read. One, two, three. Three, but we, we are, are not them draw back from the tradition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Our Father, we thank you tonight for the message we just heard. Lord, I would rather not preach than preach without the Spirit of God. I would rather just sit down. I would rather not even open my mouth. But Father, I know you're faithful. And I know that in this last hour that we have tonight, although brevity is of importance, I pray that you would help me say what you've made on my heart. Help these folks to listen to what God's laid on my heart. Our brother said we're not here by accident. That's absolutely true. The messengers got laid on our heart are meant for somebody, and I pray for it discerning enough to understand it and to it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen
I want to tell you tonight that I have been grieving. I've been grieving since November. I've been grieving since the election. I've been grieving because I love the United States of America. Yes, amen. Yeah, amen. We have situations on the horizon that if we Christians are not awake, yeah. if we're not going to stand up and do what we have to do, we know it. We're going to lose our country. Yeah, we know right. I'm not a prophet. Yes. Yeah. But I can read what the Congress is trying to do. Amen. Yes. I'm not a part of that crowd. Yeah. Amen. I'm not a part of that crowd who wants to turn our democratic republic into a socialistic country. Yes. Yes. And I am not of that crowd who okayed already, turned it back around after the previous administration had, had turned it away would allow the United States of America to pay for abortions and we're here. Yeah. 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 I'm out of that, that crowd. Amen. Yeah. I don't want to be numbered with that crowd. Amen. Yes. Yes. I'm out of that crowd that the preacher spoke about that has these new fangled things that they have to do in church, trying to make everybody comfortable with the worldly things in church. Yes. I'm out of that crowd. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I had a man that I love dearly come to my church. And we had a sweet older lady. She was 95. I I'm uh, 105. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's those lines. <laughs> she was 95. <laughs> Brother Miller knows her. Her name is Nanny Robbins. And she sang old fashioned, yeah. hillbilly gospel song. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. This man comes to me and says, Preacher, if you ever want our church to grow, you've got to get rid of that Nanny Robinson kind of music. Mm -hmm. yeah. My my talk to him was, if you think I'm going to get rid of Nanny Robinson type of music to get our church to grow, then Amen. our church will never grow. Amen. 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 We're not going to con people into coming to Amen. our church, making them believe we're something we're not. Amen. Yeah. Amen. By the time I get preaching, get done preaching most any sermon, our folks know where we stand on yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. I've gotten Brother Miller into more trouble than I tend to think about, <laughs> simply because I'm not very uh, timid. <laughs> I say things before I think. One time cost me some money. I guess it still cost me. I think I had to start paying a, I don't know what they call it, some kind of a fee to a uh, singer. Right. But Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not in that crowd. Yeah. I'm in the Amen. Avondale First Baptist Church of Calvary crowd. Amen. 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 Brother Anderson? Yes, sir. He's been my friend for a while. I'm in the Gary, what's your last name? Black. And Woods. his family's crowd. Yes. Stand up. Where, where's uh, uh, the little? I'm terrible on names. Lydia. Lydia. What is it? Lydia. I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> you know me, don't you? I knew Timid. her before she was born. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I love this crowd. Amen. Yes. They're my crowd. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Something tells me, even this fizzing lady over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's your crowd.
I was just sitting in a, a Southern Baptist church way back where, I don't know his name, but he's got that nice looking beer right there by the couple with sign right there. And my mother was sitting next to me. And that preacher got up and preached that morning, and I was so under conviction, I was crying before the invitation ever started. And I climbed over my mother and some other people in the same pew and made a beeline to that to that pulpit. And ask Jesus to be my Savior. Amen. God. An older man, Joe Cook, he went with me back to the library. He didn't take an ESV. Amen. He didn't take an American Standard. Amen. Yeah, that's good, bro. Of course, back then, the Living Bible was not even thought about. Right. Yeah. And I read recently that there's over 450 different translations of the Bible in English in the United States. Wow. And they tell you, well, we got to do that because people can't understand it. Okay. Yeah, let me ask you a question. He that hath the Son hath God. Hey, yes. He that hath not the Son of God hath not God. Amen. Amen. How many people in this room can't understand oh, that? Yeah. 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 Praise yeah. God. Amen. Yeah. I tell folks I was saved by the King James Bible. Amen. Amen. I was called to preach under the King James Amen. Bible. I began to preach under the King James Amen. Bible. I was ordained to preach under the King James Bible. Amen. I've had a part in four different churches, maybe five different churches, and never would I have ever gone to a church, pastored a church, served in a church, who did not have confidence in the King Amen. James Bible. That's Amen. 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 Yes. Some folks don't understand that. Yeah. We'll get to that in a minute. Mm -hmm. But I'm not part of that crowd that hears the gospel and gets convicted of the gospel and turns away from it and ends up in hell. No, it's so. I praise God that he looked down and saw Amen. a 12 and a half year old boy Amen. and yeah. knew that almost 70 or 50 years later I'd be standing in this place preaching to you folks. Yeah. He knew it. Yeah, he Some did. folks say, well, how did you ever get a preacher? I, I don't know how I got to be a preacher. Yeah. You have to ask God. Yeah. Yeah. I turned around twice and there was. <laughs> the truth is, I'll never get over the awe that God loved me. Yes. 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 And I believe with all my heart that that's the heartbeat of this church. Yes. Yes. Doesn't matter who you are or where you've been, God loves you. Hey. Yeah. 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 Let's see some other things. Look clear back up into verse 32. Verse 32. He said, But call to remembrance the former days, the Holy Spirit, in which after you were illuminated, the illumination. What is illumination when you're college kids? Yeah, huh? Enlightened. We're enlightened by God's Holy Spirit. Yes. When we are saved, we get all the Holy Spirit we will ever get. Yeah. Question is, does he get all of you as he right. really wants to? No, that's that's right. Right. Does, does your heart and your life have compartments and areas that you don't want God to sit on? Yeah. I think it was Brother Purdue that mentioned it the other night. Yes. He used to have to go when I was a young man, sneak around, try to find some dirty magazine somebody right. hid somewhere. Yeah. Now you walk into into any bookstore or into any uh, grocery store and you can see pictures are. and junk hanging almost anywhere. You know, listen. And you can open your computer and find just about anything you wanted anywhere. Amen. I remember when we first got computers. Yeah. We didn't have computers in high school. Yeah. If you got an electric typewriter in business class, you still thought you were dying in water. Yeah. But now you've got a computer. The first computer I got, people criticized me and said, you got a computer? What are you going to do with that thing? I said, I'm going to type the sermons up on it. I'm going to do research on it. And they said, well, don't you know that there's dirty stuff on a computer? I said, yeah, but you got to go looking for it. Yeah. Yeah. And in the beginning, that's the way it was. Yes, it was. But it's not that way anymore. Amen. If you're not awful careful, you're going to get pop-ups coming, and you're going to get things yeah. showing, and right. you're going to see things that nobody saw when I was a kid. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not of that crowd that's not illuminated. Amen. Yes. yes. Amen. I feel sorry for people that tell me all the time, as I mentioned before, I can't understand the King James Bible. Hey, you better be careful telling many yeah. preachers that because yeah. you're revealing your spiritual condition. Yeah. Yeah. If you can't understand it, let me ask you a question. 
What did you do with the Holy Spirit? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You got me, boy. Yeah. What did you do with the Holy Spirit of God that illuminates us to the Word of God? Yeah. Right. Amen. There's a lot of hard words in the Word of God. Yes, there is. The. <laughs> <laughs> thou. Yeah. You can understand the Word of God. The reason people don't understand the Word of God, I should have said this one today. I'm either going to encourage you and challenge you, or you're going to crawl under a pew before you <laughs> yeah. The yeah. Word of God is Amen. there for any Christian who wants to know it. Yeah. But you have to put a yeah. little effort into opening the book. Amen. Right? Yeah. Reading the book. Yeah. 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 You know these little uh, daily bread pamphlets? Yeah. I don't read them. Mm. We get them for some of the weaker members of our church. Yeah. Why do I say that? How many Christians open that? They read the little bit of slip at the top that tells right. what the verse is. Mm -hmm. And then they read what somebody thinks about that verse and they go on a merry way. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's true. Yeah. You need a chunk of the word of God. Hey. Hey. Amen. Amen. People want to know what my favorite meal is. And I tell them my favorite meal is steak. Yeah. And if you're going to invite me to your house for steak, I don't want a little two-ounce cube. I want about a 15-ounce cube. <laughs> and you can play with the Word of God all you want. Yeah. You can open it and say you're reading it and close it and not read it. But my God says He wants to illuminate Amen. you with what it says, Amen. what it teaches, and what it gives yeah. you for yeah. a desire to serve Him. Yeah. Amen. That was big number two. <laughs> big number three. We are not of them who cannot endure. In our prayer meeting at the pastor's office a while ago, we talked about some of the folks in this church, this church, that have had lots of serious problems in their lives. Do you realize every man that's preached here can say amen to that? Every one of us. That's right. Every one of our churches, the people have problems. Why am I saying that? Well, I'm saying that. I wish my father would have hired me. I'm saying that because I learned a lesson as a young deacon in a church. We had a little girl. And then we had a little boy. Lydia, I'm partial to, but she's a sweetheart, not like her mother. <laughs> <laughs> So our little girl was good, my little girl. Our little boy, not so much. And I believed in Bible discipline. And I felt bad disciplining that little boy. Here I was, a deacon in a church, and I was spanking my kid almost every time I went to church. What's up with that? One of the older ladies, she wasn't much older than me, she was a little older than me, had us over to dinner one time. Without any asking of questions from me, she brought up the subject of discipline our children. Mm -hmm. And she said to me, you know, I used to fight with that because it made me feel so guilty to have to always discipline my, child, my kids in church. Mm -hmm. And you know what that said to me? She had the same problems I had. Mm -hmm. Gary's got the same problems I had as a husband. Yeah. Maybe more so. Yeah. <laughs> my pick on <laughs> All of us have those problems. <laughs> and older Christian, don't you try to convince people you're a super saint. Yeah. Be visible, yeah. be vocal, yeah. transparent, yeah. and let them know yeah. that you've gone through those problems yes. so you can help them That's right. Right. go through their problems. Amen. Yes. 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 Come on, That's preacher. God's plan. Amen. Amen. Yes. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. Amen. 4 and 5, I think it is. <laughs> I'm out of that crowd who can't endure. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Job said in Job 23, verse 10, But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth and go. Hey, listen. Amen. Are you awake? Amen. Yeah. You've got a pain tonight and you're suffering. You've got a problem tonight that is bothering you. You've got financial difficulty. And you don't know where you're going. That is a trial, and a test. That's a yeah. problem that you face. And the Bible says when you go through it, and you handle it God's way, you'll come forth as gold. Yeah. Yes. He refines yes. all those problems out of your life. He refines mm. all that, mm. uh, how shall I say, anger out of your life or impatience out of your life. He refines that out of it when we are trapped. Thank you, God. We'll come forth. Thank you. 
Yeah. You know, this idea of enduring. I'm going to tell you personal testimony right now. When I was a young preacher, Dr. Miller, I never thought I was going to get old. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I would watch older preachers and they would hobble around and I'd say, I'm not going to get that way. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to exercise. I'm going to play yeah. softball. I'm going to go bowling. I'm going to get myself together. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have recognized me when I was in high school. Yeah. I weighed about 150 pounds and I was six feet and skinny. But I played everything I could get my hands on. Mm -hmm. And did up to the age of 45. Yeah. And when the age of 45 came along, that angel of old timers disease caught me into the epidemic. Yeah. He put me out of condition. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to always be able to do what you do now. Yeah. And you're going to get some really enduring trials that you're going to go through as you're older. So do what you can do now. Amen. And when you get older and can't do what you did before, yes. don't get all down in the dumps about it and, yeah. and depressed and That's sad right. and discouraged. Do what you can and keep on doing it. Yeah. 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 I found out, though, I feel old. Yeah. We were talking, Brother, and I were talking tonight, and I asked him when he was in the Marines, and he told me, I said, did you ever get the knob? And then he said to me, well, I was in in 72. Well, I got out of the service in 73. That means I was older than he was. I said, thanks a lot. Now I feel like I'm the dinosaur. <laughs> Listen, churches and pastors and individuals endure. We have to be bombarded with these people that think we are old-fashioned, yes. narrow-minded, single-minded, mm -hmm. nuts. Yeah. Yes. Praise God. Amen. You know what? I tell our folks, I'm this old, this old-fashioned and this narrow-minded. Amen. It's sad. Yeah. It's sad. Some preachers won't get an assistant pastor. That's right. They don't want the problems. Yeah. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Because it, it, they, you get some young guy in there and immediately he knows more than you do, so he thinks. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he's not as compassionate as you want him to be. Mm -hmm. And he's not doing everything you want him to do. And some yeah. folks think it's just not worth the trouble. I don't expect him to be me. I expect him to learn and to help hold my hands up when I'm old. Yeah. 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 I've had folks say to me, when are you going to retire? I said, when God sends me a yeah. peak slip and says, I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. We can endure. Yes. We can endure. Paul said to Timothy, endure hardness as a good soul. Amen. Jesus Amen. Right. We can endure. Your offerings are going to go down. Your offerings are going to go up. But Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and yeah. 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 right, brother. We oh, have yeah. something yes. better. Yeah. You know, that's one thing I like about the book of Hebrews. Amen. Jesus is that's better than anything. Yes. Amen. 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 I like to think about it. When I hit a hard place, and it's going to get harder, I don't mean to be negative about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Unless churches start to stand and do what they're supposed to do. God help. Yes, sir. God help. Yes. 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 The Republicans are not going to help with the, the problems we're facing in our nation. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you say that? Well, because I, I'm just going to say, brothers, if I make your folks mad, you tell them to be mad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, President Trump changed some things that were beneficial to the church. Yeah, that's right. Right. Yeah, exactly. As soon as he, as soon as he changed those things, it was just a temporary executive order, which I don't like in the first place. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But he had the Senate on his side, and a part of the time he had the uh, 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 Congress on his side, the House of Representatives, and they didn't take anything up, and they didn't stand behind him, and they didn't right. do it. That's right. That's right. If anything's going to be done, it's because the churches are going to learn that they're going to have to endure some questions. Amen. Yeah. What would you do if suddenly the, uh, the IRS says, well, you can't talk about anything that we tell you not to talk about, or we're going to take your tax exempt status. Yeah. Yeah. What would you do? Yeah. Would you keep giving? Yes. Yes. I would hope the answer would yes. be a response. Yes. Yes. Four. Yes. Somebody doesn't like what you do. What if they came over here and said to this church, we're changing our, our rules and regulations about 
churches and what they're allowed to do in this vicinity, and you've got to stop doing this or we're going to take your uh, permit. What do they call it? When you, occupancy permit away. Mm -hmm. See, some of us went into this battle a long time ago with Christian food. Right. Yes, yeah. we did. I remember the days when we fought over lighting, we fought over outlets, we fought yeah. over the fire marshal would come in and pick it apart because it was good on Sunday, yeah. but not good enough for Monday. You know what so We went through those battles. Yes. I remember Lee uh, Lester Rawls. Yes. They came into his homes and they said, we're closing your homes. Why? Yeah. Well, we have regret, uh, we have reported uh, cases of uh, abuse in this home. No. No. He was just applying biblical. That's exactly loving, right. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's yes. right. Let me tell you a secret. State has a lot more power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, they do. I'm not of that crowd who cannot endure. Right. Somebody preached for me one time, and I had just had back surgery, and I was hobbling around on a cane. And they made a statement that kind of made me mad. They said, Brother Gilbert could be retired right now, getting medical types, and, you know, enjoying the last years of his life. Yeah. I want to say, shut up, what are you saying? <laughs> I'm still enjoying preaching in the last year. Yeah. 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 I'm still enjoying telling people about Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we are. Yes, Jesus, all right. <laughs> Let's look at verse 34. Mm. Verse 33 says, partly why you were made a dancing stock by the reproaches and afflictions, and partly why you became companions of them that were so used. For you had compassion of me and my bonds. Yeah. Well, I'm not of that crowd that had no compassion. Mm -hmm. One of my hero preachers for years was Jack Hines. He preached a message one time, I think I cried over for about a week. Mm -hmm. He said the thing that's missing in independent fundamental Baptist churches is the dampness. That's it. Yeah. And the tear that comes That's down. It. That's it. Amen. That's it. No tears. Yeah. We don't cry over lost folks anymore. Mm -mm. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Somebody asked you to pray for their aunt. She's lost. Okay, I'll pray for her. And then three months later, you don't pray for her. Yeah. Is she still lost? Right. You said you would pray for her so she could get saved. If she doesn't get saved and you don't pray for her, yeah. what does that make you? Yeah, give them credit. Come on. Aren't you a liar? liar. liar. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to tell you about compassion. I have a doctorate in tears. Mm -hmm. My folks will tell you at my church, I write cry at the drop of a hat. Yeah. If nobody else drops it, I'll drop it. <laughs> and that used to be true until I got that back operation and have to take some pain medication. Yeah. And somehow the tears don't come quite as easily out of my mouth. No, they don't. They don't. No, they don't. But they still drip down the bottom of my heart. Yeah, they do. You go, boy. I watch our folks go through difficulties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. I watch our ladies go through problems with their husbands. Yeah. One lady had her husband drying marijuana in their microwave mm -hmm. in front of their little Lydia's age child. Mm -hmm. I've watched one deaconess, who was the wife of the deacon at our church, have a husband beat her almost all the time, and nobody knew it because she always stayed home and hid it under sunglasses. Mm -hmm. And one day she was in the store, and I saw her without her sunglasses on, well, saw her all beat up. And I asked her, and she broke down in front of me. I was younger then. I went to see that deacon. And I told him, if you ever beat her again, if she doesn't take a frying pan to your head, I will. Do you understand? Oh, boy. Yes. Good for you. Amen. I'm not sure I would do that now. <laughs> I might say I'll run a pistol after you. <laughs> I'm too old to run and too tired to fight. I'll just shoot you. Another <laughs> 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 This was in my first church. I don't keep 
teach everything about it, Charlie. I wish somebody would have taught me that. Her father had sexually abused her and her sister when they were young, and she never told anybody until she got married and told her husband. And she came to me in tears. What do you say? You're 23 years old, first church. What do you say? He was a preacher, by the way. What do you say? I wept over folks. I still weep over folks. I wept over this college. Yeah. I wept for Dr. Miller and with Dr. Miller. Yeah. i got to get past this one rather than get over it. You know, the Bible says, I think it's at least three times that children that Jesus went yeah. with compassion. Yeah. He was moved to compassion because they were scattered abroad as a sheep having no shepherd. Mm -hmm. And he went. Mm -hmm. He saw them one time when they were out in the field, they had nothing to eat, and he wept again. Mm -hmm. Turn with me to Jude, if you can find it. It's over just before the book of Revelation. That's in the New Testament. <laughs> <laughs> Got it, David. <laughs> <laughs> Can you repeat that again? Yeah. <laughs> That's really funny because he said that a lot in college. I put that down. Don't tell me what that was. Look at me in June. There's no, no chapter yet. So it's June, and we're going to look at verse 17. It says, But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you the last time who would walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keeping yourselves in the love of God. And looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And if some have compassion, making a difference. Yeah. Yeah. And others saved with fire, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments <laughs> spotted by the flesh. Yeah. Can I tell you a secret? And all the preachers go to get <coughs> If you go soul winning just to put a notch on your belt, just stay yeah. home. Yeah. 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 If you go soul winning just so you go back and tell the preacher, I have 15 saved today. Yeah. Uh, you want to know the truth? I've been soul winning. I've talked to people. I've had people make professions. I don't know how many people were saved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My job's not to know. My job's yeah. to give them the gospel. Yeah. 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 And you do that for Jesus. Yeah. You don't do it yeah. for anybody else. Yeah. 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 Compassion, as one of the brothers said when he prayed, you look at the people around you, you have compassion because you know they're going to hell yeah. and somebody tells them different. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Well, let's look at the next one. Verse 35. It says, cast not away therefore your confidence your confidence. What's another word for confidence? Sure. Faith. Right? Yeah. Preacher just preached right. You pray with faith, that's praying with confidence, and God's going to answer the prayer. I'm not of those folks that don't have faith or don't think faith's important. Mm -hmm. yeah. As you were saved, so walk you in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. How were you saved? By grace through faith. Yes. How are you supposed to walk? By faith. Mm -hmm. This college is worthy of having not to worry about their, their finances every year, every year, every year. Yeah. And folks go to banquets, and we have one. We, last year we had a virtual. digital a, virtual. virtual banquet up there. And this year, Brother uh, George Anderson having a real banquet at his place, and we're still going to have a virtual banquet at our place. Wouldn't it be great if somebody wouldn't say, well, I can't afford to give, instead would say, well, Lord, what would you have me to give? Amen. Yeah. Yes. What would you have me to give? Amen. I don't want to be caught up in this thing where nobody's going to give money because they're having no faith that God can give it back to them. Yeah. You talk to people that tithe, and they'll tell you that's a fallacy. You can't outgive God, and that's not a cliche. That's right. He opens the windows of heaven, and that's hey, the truth. Hey, that's hey, the hey, 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 hey. That's right. Then verse 36, I gotta go quickly. Hold on, I have four minutes. 
for you have, uh, uh, for ye have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. Wow, amen. You're not going to like this one. I'm out of that group that has no need. Yeah. I'm a needy person. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I want you to understand this. I am blessed by God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Come on. Man. But in reality, I'm a sinner saved by Amen. 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 I don't have any any way to look down on somebody. No. Nope. I don't have any reason to let anybody look down on me. But I am a needy person. Yeah. And I, I, I talk to Christians who are Baptists and say, well, I, you know, I don't have any sins in my life. Yeah. Well, give me your secret because I'm not sinless with you. Sure. <laughs> Amen. I am in the sight of God. That's right. But you follow me around a while, you'll, you'll see I'm not sinless with perfect. True confession this evening, I was running a little late, wanted to get down and get something to eat before we had our, our service tonight. You haven't had those days when nothing's going right. Yeah. I'm going to spit in your mouth to turn the pages. <laughs> but all that traffic coming north, there's a lot of construction down there. Right. And a lot of traffic coming north. Mm -hmm. And they're merging into the left lane. Well, I learned last night to get in the left lane and stay there. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So I got in the left lane last night. Sure enough, like they always do, <laughs> some people... Don't have sense enough to say, well, when the sign says right lane ends, that means merge to the left lane. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going down the highway both nights. It has always been one of those sins or weights that does so easy to say. <laughs> <laughs> it irritates me when people keep going down there until they have to merge into traffic. Yeah. And then they expect you to scoot out of the way so they can get in. I told you, brother, it's true confession. I shouldn't feel that way. I should be generous. I should open the lane and let them go in. Don't y'all laugh. You got stuff. Just the show. That's good. But churches say they have no needs. Christians say they have no needs. Mm -hmm. Moms and dads think they have no needs because now they're perfect. They're raising children. Right. Well, if you were perfect and you were raising children, your children would be perfect. Mm -hmm. Now that worked out for you. <laughs> <laughs> Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3, verse 17. One of the seven churches, the church of Laodicea. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and I am a priest with goods, and I have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked, naked, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Amen. How many of us came in here tonight to worship God? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. yeah. What is worship? When I see worship in Scripture, a man falls flat on his face. Yes. Yeah. All these uh, praise and worship services. Mm -hmm. We had a man in our church leave the singing one time. You know him, Lynn uh, Peterson. He said, how about I, I put a praise or worship singing song right in the beginning? I said, that'd be good. He said, well, what do you think I'd use? I said, well, I think you ought to use praise him, praise him, Jesus, our blessed Jesus. Yeah. He said, well, that's not new. I said, it's a praise song. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, I mentioned two or three others. We say we have no needs. Yeah. We need to get honest. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We need to understand that God looks down Amen. from heaven and his eyes are running Amen. to and fro across the earth and his eyes see clear to the bottom of your heart. Yeah. Yeah. He sees the wicked thoughts. He yeah. sees the wicked desires. He yeah. sees the cuss words you never say. Yeah. He sees the anger that you may never act out on. He sees it all. Yeah. That's why Jesus said, no, yeah. you don't have to commit adultery with a woman. You just have to think about committing yeah. adultery yeah. with a woman yeah. when you've already done it. Right. Yeah. Now, brother... If the, the committed adultery was a high bar, you know, down here, and Jesus raised it, my goodness. Mm -hmm. And we're going to say we have no right. needs. Mm -hmm. 
With head still bowed and eyes still closed, how many of you would raise your hand and say, God, God spoke to me about something specific. Not being part of a certain crowd or being part of a certain crowd, the right crowd. God spoke to me about some specific things in the second message tonight. Would you raise your hand? All right. How many of you would say, God spoke to me in the first message? About praying, praying through, praying in the Holy Ghost, praying till the fire comes down. God spoke to me. Would you raise your hand? All right, let's all stand. Everybody who raised their hand, come now. In my preacher, you say, do business with God. But it's really letting him do business with you. God spoke to you. Now you need to get out of the wrong crowd or get in the right crowd or start praying. or Come now, whatever God spoke to you about, come now. We don't want to sing. You come. You pray. We have guest preachers here tonight. They're up praying. Come on for the second time tonight. Why are some of you looking around? I said, please, every head bowed, every eye closed. Look into your heart. Ask the Lord to show you if there's some things you need to be yielding to him or you need to be withdrawing from. I didn't say, did you like everything the preachers preached? But I didn't find anything any preacher preached that isn't biblical. And they were humble. They told you what they were like.
36 people came forward. Some of you have knelt where you are and you're praying. But it's important that if God spoke to your heart, you're not one of those that you get on your knees and yield your heart to the Lord and then order your life with his help aright. second, lift up your preacher voice where you are and lead us in closing prayer. And then listen carefully, college students and uh, people who are our uh, students for two days in the college days. When Brother Anderson says amen, you students of the college don't go anywhere. And yes, don't go anywhere yet. Meet me right up here where the music group is. We're going to tell you how to get back because you're getting back different than you got here. And you're going to two different places. So you all come up here. And Brother Anderson, we need you up here too. Brother Anderson, we you lift up your voice and lead us. Ask God to keep working on our hearts. Yes. Yes. Heavenly Father, again, we, we thank you so much for the word of God. Yes. We thank you that your word was preached here tonight. Yes. Thank and we thank you for speaking to our hearts. Keep speaking to our hearts, Lord. Yes. Thank you for decisions that have been made. Help us not to forget it. Oh, God. We praise you. We love you so much. Lord, help us to make a difference in this world. Help us to stand. Oh, God. We pray for First Baptist Church. And the other churches are represented here to, tonight. And Lord, help us to stand. Let's draw closer to you. Open up our Bibles. Pray through. Mm -hmm. And we pray for Atlantic Coast Baptist College. Training, service, your service, Lord. Oh, God. Work in these young people's hearts. Help them to stand. Follow through. Oh, God, we thank you. Mm -hmm. Lord, pray for safety as we go through our different places. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 I really appreciated the way everybody did with the food tonight again and last night and the work that you've done. But I need to know, because we're not sure right now. I was talking to Brother Earl. We don't know how many people are bringing pizzas. All right, so could you just put your hands up, put your fingers up as to how many you're bringing, how many pizzas? Two over here, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, anybody else? Okay, Barb and I can bring several. Okay, 24, anybody else? Okay, excellent, listen. We're going to really start working on our children's programs and our nursery because I know that parents, you need that. 
And so, folks, let's get on the ball and do it, all right? We've talked about it for a long time. Let's get back to it. Please, I'm begging you, all right? Thank you so much.